Okay, so I got the trailer in today, and we're going to put new brakes. And I believe all new drums, I'm going to check these back ones. I know the front ones are about war plumb out, so. I um, also kind of got some tires, a couple might need replaced. And there's an old dogger that needs a hug. Ever since she was a puppy, this is how she would do every morning. She put her nose between my legs, put her feet up on my... And I don't like dogs that jump on people, but uh, she was so cute. She got spoilt, didn't you? Yeah, she needs her hair combed, but she don't want nobody to comb it. Nope. Anyway, that's the agenda for today. Uh, kind of got the shop cleared out a little bit, so I got some room to work. And uh, another hug? Goodness. Uh, I gotta get under the trailer and release the S can or the slack adjusters, I mean. So, I guess that's what we'll do first. Get a 9 16 wrench and a, a creeper. broke again too. This trailer's been with me since 99. I already had that one backed off because she cammed over on me the other day. <laughs> it was not a good thing. Luckily I was at a truck stop when I was when that happened so. Basically I got the brakes released so the spring brakes are applied or the air's applied releasing the brakes and that lets you back off these slack adjusters easier than if you tried to do it with the brakes on because then you're going to have pressure on except for you know and roll around under here <laughs> and we'll get this one it's pretty tight fit if i get much bigger I have to hire somebody smaller to get under here. Probably should do that anyway. Just back it off so whenever the spring brakes do apply, and then the brakes are still will still be loose. Now, we can jack it up. I think I'm going to start with this wheel here. Uh, just a, <laughs> a note about this trailer is this front axle is a different bolt pattern and a different hub. I actually had to replace this axle. I had a wheel bearing go out and I didn't catch it in time. <clears throat> I didn't lose the wheels, but it rent the axle and the hub. So, this is the old style hub. Uh, they don't make this anymore. So I've got two different sets of wheels. Um, I thought about replacing this axle, but I don't know. What's the point? It works. It does the job. So, anyway, I'm going to get her jacked up here and we'll uh, see if we can't get so I talk trash about Arbor Freight but this is the one item I bought from them that's been good so far. It's been good for more than tw two uses. It's uh, rather amazing. Still goes, still goes, still choo-choo's. Um, <laughs> anyway, 
You want to pull this wheel off on uh, these old style bud wheels. There's an inner and an outer. Uh, these are stud pilot, what they call the stud pilot. <clears throat> but they need to have right hand. These are left hand thread on the left hand side. Right hand threads on the right hand side. So these are reversed from what you'd think they'd be. So we'll get these off of here. My assistant is back. She'll leave here when I hit this gun though. <laughs> she, don't, she don't like it much. So left. Actually we're gonna tighten it. Or we're gonna go right <clears throat> for Um, ever since I've had this trailer I've fought with uh, the wheel seals leaking so they used to be an oil bath but I'd heard of a lot of guys going to grease and what would happen is you'd put new wheel seals in it you'd run it a couple weeks and then you'd have oil running out and ruin your brake linings and if you've never bought brake linings, you don't realize that's a lot of money. And uh, I've been running these hubs for, I don't remember when I put these on. It's been a long time ago. But they're doing great so far. Uh, as far as I know. Now, I do have new wheel bearings ordered. Um, ain't a very bright light, is it? I might have run my battery down. I got new wheel bearings ordered, so I'm gonna go ahead and replace them while I got everything apart. I'm hoping to do this once and be done for a few years. Uh, this is probably, this will be the second set of hubs I think I've put on it, or drums, not hubs, drums. Um, I'm trying to think. I don't even remember when it was. I might have wrote it down somewhere, but probably didn't. Um, pretty good with note key. <clears throat> I'm not very good with note key. Anyway, take his tab loose. One thing I didn't get was new washers for these. So I'm hoping there's enough tabs left to tighten them up where they're supposed to be. But I think I did a video on how to set these up. That same socket that fits the hubcap fits the. That got her off. Never fails. This is so easy if I'm not filming it. It's like. reasons I don't film everything I do. Well, he says I have a good temperament, but did they really know me that well? <laughs> oh, there we go. Okay, come on. Get out of my way. Of course. <laughs> 
I used a, just a molly base grease like I used to grease my backhoe. Last time I packed these, I uh, wanted to kind of see how it did. Uh, I bought some regular wheel bearing, high temp wheel bearing grease, but these weren't new when I repacked them last. Uh, these have probably been, I don't know, 50,000 miles, something like that. But they're still coated in grease. Uh, I don't see a lot of wear. So apparently <clears throat> it's okay. Um, if I remember right, I may have put a little bit of oil on the oil seal because they're designed to be wet seals. Um, I don't know that that did any good, or if that mattered, but anyway, I just realized you couldn't see anything I was doing there. I'm, I've got to get better at this camera stuff. Anyway, uh, one down, almost, and those are heavy, so I think I'm going to set the trailer on some blocks. And we'll get the floor jack over here to pull that hub out. Hard to beat old railroad ties for blocking stuff up. This probably ain't gonna work perfect, but. It's off though. So, like I say, the reason I'm pulling these is I believe these brake drums are to the point of no return. And you can see my brake shoes are, well, they're fair. Still not down, well, that one is down to the rivets, isn't it? Yeah, they were done. Anyway, but once your shoes get, your once your drums get wore out, um, it's time to replace them. Because if we put new brakes on there, they're not going to run as long, and they'll be, we'll be back in the same boat, so. I think I'm spending about 3000 bucks on brakes, brake shoes, springs, um, and new wheel bearings. So, this is not the way I like to spend money. It's not fun to spend money on brakes, but. You gotta have them. Hopefully these come out. Okay, so here again. <laughs> I guess my adapter kit and my Arbor Freight um, Impact driver didn't hold up. We'll put a little bit of just regular old torque on it, see what happens here. That's what I'm afraid of. Okay. If I was smart, I'd probably put NICs on these. Uh, I think I've changed this set of drums once. The front axles had to sit. Um, well, when, when I replaced the axle, it came with everything. Thank goodness. Oh yeah, looky there. I did, I used anti-seize. Yay me. Put some on there before I tight, tighten that up. <laughs> there we go. One down. A whole bunch more to go. I 
might just use an impact on that. See if this little old uh, D wall can do it. Nope, I didn't figure it would. We'll get out the earthquake. Surely the earthquake can do it. Just give it a low power. I don't want to break nothing. If I remember the first time I changed these, they came with a, a hex head bolt that had, you know, the tiny. Head. Boy, I'll tell you what, I've had more trouble with them than anything. But thank goodness they changed to a socket head bolt. And thank goodness I knew to use anti seize. I don't know if them front ones are going to come off that easy because they're factory. Factory probably didn't use anti seize. A lot of people are scared of it because they think it's going to make things fall apart, but it doesn't. Oh, shoot. I got a little too carried away with that one. I'm going to have trouble with at least one, probably. Dang. so we can throw it in the parts washer. Um, yeah. That's what we're going to do next. Clean this thing up. I might go ahead and just knock the bearing out while I got it laying on the floor here. So, I'm going to do a review on this no-name half-inch drive impact driver set. Um, that's like the second time I used it. I would not recommend. Supposed to have wheel seals. I didn't see any in that box. So I'm really hoping that they didn't forget me. Um, so I'm not going to worry about washing bearings up. I washed up the other one. I kind of wanted to see what shape they're in. They look like they're done pretty good with regular old grease. Um, I know when I used to change the oil or change these out when the seal would go bad, that oil would be so nasty. Um, 
I know oil bathtub sounds like a really good deal. Um, my experience, it's a really bad deal. I just never had any any goodness. <laughs> I guess don't like them. I wouldn't recommend those either. But anyway, um, yeah. I've got new bushings, all new hardware. So I didn't buy new S cams, but I don't really think I need to. Although S cam bushing don't look too good. Uh, well, I probably should. Uh, This is one of those jobs I really want to build me a wash pit out north of my shop. This would be a really good place to have this when I'm doing this job. Because I could take pressure washer after I got the wheels off and clean up all this junk under here. And it would make life way better. So. But anyway, I'm going to probably just try putting new bushings in this in the this cam and run it surely it's got a few tens of thousands more miles in it I don't know I probably need to replace the axle at some point I might just need to replace the whole dang trailer okay I'm back at it here anyway I've got uh, I put a new bushing in this S cam i kind of show you with the light a little better, maybe. Um, put a new bushing in the, both ends of the S-cam shaft. Uh, I've got new bushings in the spider on this side. And I'm about ready to put the brake together. So that's kind of where we're at right now. Um, okay, so what I got to do and I'm gonna set you up here. I'm trying to show you how I set up a set of brake shoes. And this job has been kicking my butt. It's been <laughs> it's been one thing after another, it seems like. I got the other side done. I got one side done. Um, I got frustrated and quit recording. But these are little pins the springs hook to. You have to put these in. Sometimes your kit won't have them, so you gotta save them out of your old ones. Uh, but you just take a hammer, drive them down in there. And on these shoes, we've got if you can see that, a pin and a roller. And I don't know whether to grease these. Um, thing is that you can't you can't grease them. 
So I usually just put them together and we'll do one one way and one the other. I guess we should have the edge codes point the same way. Um, Right, really, I'll turn that around. Because the edge code's supposed to be visible, I think, on the inside of your brake. <clears throat> and I would rather have the pin facing out, outside. The reason for that is, uh, well, if this clip comes off or falls off, the pin won't go inside. The, the pin will actually hit this plate on the back of the S-cam, keep it from coming out. Uh, if you don't do it that way, it could actually fall down inside the brake drum. And that would probably cause some troubles. So anyway, we'll do them both the same here, uh, facing the same way. One's left, one's right, I guess. Yeah, that's gonna be the bottom one. Well, I guess I need to turn this one around. Is that right? You won't be able to see the edge code on one of them because it's facing that way. Uh, anyway, I'm gonna leave it alone. Um, let's see, I'll have, this one will be on the bottom. I'm gonna turn this one around. Cause it'll be on the top. Um, Brake drums were pretty much toast. This is this axle is older than the other one. This one came on the trailer originally. So <clears throat> it's got more damage done to it. <laughs> I'll show you here in a minute. So what I like to do is um, you can see I'm pretty involved in the work here with dirt. Okay, so get the brake shoe set up. Top one on top of the S cam. Yeah, like so. Now, put them in backwards. in place and we can work on putting these in. Put 
are pretty simple. And you can actually take a pry bar or a breaker bar over your flash grips. Got it too low. I gotta get up a little bit higher. Sucks. That one's hard to get in there. I don't know why the other one was so easy? Quality kit, quality Chinese Come on right. There we go So that's uh, All there is to it there putting the brake shoes on um, so your S cam, when you're, there's a left and a right. Whenever your air brake pushes the lever forward, it opens the shoes. And when I talk about it camming over, that's when your shoes and your drums get so wore out that this shaft will actually push all the way, turn all the way. When you adjust it, it goes further and further and it'll go to the point where it'll get stuck and it'll just hold your brakes on. <clears throat> and that's not a good thing. Um, <laughs> not good at all. When that happens, uh, usually you gotta stop, get out of your trailer or your truck and adjust them up until you can go ahead and break them over. Once they're cammed over, you can release them because the cam will keep going around in a circle the more you adjust your slack adjuster and you can get them back to where you can get out of the road or get uh, you know what I'm trying to say I guess so another problem I run into and I've got the old axle this is one of the hubs and this is where the bearing rides um, you can see that thing's just been spinning now like i told you earlier these these hubs are not available anymore they switch to a different style which is a hub pilot uh, eight bolt and i probably should have just bought two new hubs i should probably should have just bought a new axle actually but i didn't but anyway i've got a hub off the old axle that i I spun the bearings on. Now this is the side that didn't spin the bearings, luckily. And this one has a lot less miles on it. <clears throat> so I'll get it cleaned up. We'll put the new drum on. Um, and then we'll be ready to pack the wheel bearings or put the bearing races in, pack the wheel bearings and that kind of stuff. So anyway, I'll get you set. So I was able to get <clears throat> Tempkin bearings. These are US made. When people tell you you can't get US made bearings, you can. USA right there. Um, put that back in that package. I'll be packing it here in a minute. Um, so I'll go ahead and a little brake cleaner just to clean off the preservative they put on these. I probably should have put them in the freezer, but I think they'll go in all right. I haven't had any trouble with them being too tight. They're usually too loose, but. And I'm sure I could use my press for this, but 
Now, why am I using that side of the hammer? I'm used to my other hammer. It doesn't have two sides, two different sides. This one, you gotta pay attention. It's a little more complicated. I like this hammer though, three pound, good, good size. I think it's three. Yeah. That one went in nice and snug. And from what I understand, Dexter is okay with you changing these over to grease because they've had so many seal failures. That was the first thing that happened right after I bought this trailer. This thing would <coughs> it'd throw, a, throw a wheel seal. I'm gonna go ahead and pack the inner and the outer. Get them both ready here. Got some good old gooey wheel bearing grease. Uh, you can use about any kind, but the way I was taught to do it, it's probably the way most people do it. You, you grab a little bit of grease and smash it into your palm until you see it start coming out the top like that and then you just rotate around and keep doing it it's a messy messy way to do it but this is actually I like dealing with this better than I do that old stinky 90 weight axle grease or axle oil And I haven't put new bearings in this trailer and shoot, I don't know, it was several years ago. Last time I did brakes, I don't think I did bearings. I think that's when I switched from oil bath to, I cleaned them up and I greased them. The only thing I think a person needs to do if you do it this way is I would go ahead and oil that back seal because it's made to run in oil. Um, goodness, These big bearings take a lot of grease. Go ahead and set that one in there. You want to be sure and get that in there before you put your oil seal in. I didn't do it this time, but I have done it before. Like I say, we'll just go ahead and, while I got the gloves on, we'll just go ahead and pack this one. So, shop work like this it's timed out pretty good I've, I'm in between I've got a big job coming up another big hole to dig like the one I made the video about next week so this is good timing I've got a couple small jobs I need to be working on right now, but it's Tuesday and you know. Uh, we got plenty on that one, I think. So we'll want to 
cover that one up just to oh I'm gonna have a mess. This is gonna be a mess. But anyway a job like this if I was to hire a shop to do it I'd be without a trailer probably for more than a week and uh, yeah this is the tricky part yeah didn't matter <laughs> I don't think it matters how careful I am okay so there's that I'm ready to put the seal in. I'm gonna do this before I put the drum together. That way it's a little bit easier. So put a little bit of oil in the seal. And this is just a steel plate. I think we're seated. The only thing is, I'm going to have to do something different here. Just sliding over the shaft. So, probably next thing I need to do will be. put the drum on. Alright. Put that to keep the crud from falling in on that thing. This outfit gets pretty heavy by the time we get done. shiny new piece of Chinese iron right there about a $400 part times four you know people ask why dirt contractors charge so much well, they don't understand we don't drive a Toyota Prius to work Well, we might drive on to work if we're already got our machine there, I guess. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm not saying it's bad. But transporting equipment is expensive. And stuff like this really... I mean, it gets to the point you either buy a new trailer or you keep fixing the junk you got. pretty hard hit little Milwaukee's are pretty neat Well, we got some water in the line or something. I'm gonna do some bleeding here. This thing's heavy. Good night. It's got to be 75 pounds or more. Uh.
but I am excited. We almost got two of them done. Might not seem like much, but <laughs> it's a pretty big deal. Two more to go. Front ones, I'm not going to mess with the, the S cams. Are in better shape on it, so I don't think I'll have to do any work on that. So before I shove it all the way in, I'm gonna stuff some grease up in that hub. And this is just for good measure, I guess. I don't know if it actually helps. I think if the hub gets warmed up, the grease kind of circulates a little bit in there. But I've been running like this for several years and I don't see any effects on the bearing. I mean other than that one hub looked really bad. Um, I might have to buy another tub of grease for, well, I think I got another one, never mind. This ain't enough to do another axle for sure. So that's what I used, that's a pound. I used one of those for two axles so Try to keep a box for trash there all right we'll just shove this in here i'm gonna take these gloves off i think here we go again that'll be just a little bit high bit so first we put the flat washer with the notch in and then a nut inner nut so what the book recommends is to tighten oh that's dirty dirt mud on it. I recommend you tighten these up to 100 foot pounds while you're turning the, the hub and then you back it off you go finger tight and then you back that off a quarter turn to three eighths and then you put your locking tab rings or your locking washer on and then you bend two tabs to the back nut two to the front And this axle, this side's going to get two new tires on it, so I don't have them mounted yet. I did some painting on my rims, they were pretty rusty. So I painted them up. So what we do this for is to seat the bearings. turn really easy when they're tight and I'm not gonna put a torque wrench on this part I'm just gonna tighten it and we're just making sure that the bearings are seated and they're not moving 
before this day is over, I will be covered in grease along with. So what we do is we go finger tight and then I go about a quarter turn, maybe a shade more. You might be able to get one reuse out of these, but if you're doing a Dexter axle, I'd go ahead and buy a new one because these things don't, they don't survive more than <clears throat> one or two sessions. <laughs> That's just, a, a, and the place I found them, they're hard to find. So the place I found them, they was charging eight bucks a piece for them right there. And they had, uh, you know, I bought, I bought Tempkin bearings from a bearing shop and they were about 50 bucks a piece per set. They had them there, just the cone of the bearing was 27, or no, it was 37, $40 just for one part of the bearing. So them trailer shops got a little bit of markup on their stuff, which they gotta make money. I mean, I'm not trying to say they're ripping people off, but that was a genuine Chinese bearing too. It wasn't even a good Koyo or a, Koyo's a good brand. They're J Japan, I believe. But I figured, so I got $400 in bearings for all four. Um, and I've got this set to 150. This is our final torque. So, like I say, I got the light right in the way of the camera, didn't I? Anyway, now the fun part. This requires a hammer and a chisel. At least that's what I like to use. So we try to find the flat on one of the back nuts or the wherever a tang is going to hit a flat spot. That one there is pretty close. And it's good to get the opposite side if you can, I think. And then on this front one, I usually just take the, try not to booger the threads up on that cap, but they want uh, four to 10 thousandths clearance. I'm not measuring this one. When I've done it this way before, it usually works. And I think if you do them the way the manufacturer says to do them, you're probably going to be all right on them. Uh, another thing Dexter does bad is these caps are plastic. Also hard to find. So I've had these blow out on the highway. They get brutal from sunlight. <clears throat> and, uh, anyway, I try to keep an extra one around because and these are supposed to be 35 but they don't leak if you got grease in there so we're, we're down to just putting the uh, on this axle putting tires on and the slack adjusters and adjust the brakes and then we'll be able to move forward to the front axle I wanted to do one axle at a time and I wanted to be sure and get this old one first because it I knew it would probably be the one that would give me the most trouble uh, overall I think it's going to be all right um, 
I'm glad I had a spare hub because if I didn't, I'd be looking for another axle probably. Um, they're just not, <laughs> it's, it's kind of crazy. Um, but having, you know, having the spare parts, the hub right there is pretty dang expensive. So, but anyway, that's, uh, that's that. So this is how I adjust brakes. I've got the spring brakes released, in the, so we're going to turn these out. Until we are tight, and then I'm going to back this off a half a turn. And with new pads and new shoes, I might need to adjust them pretty quick. I'm going to make sure that this locking tab locks. And that's it. Very simple.